Hi, in this video, I want to show you how to find the inverse of a function without showing any work. I think this is really cool because you can do it just by thinking about what an inverse function is. So we start with the function here, f of x, and this is usually given by a formula. Right now, you don't see a formula, you just see f of x. And this does uh, something to x. Usually, uh, we have some type of mathematical formula um, so maybe, you know, you take the square root of x or you add 3 and divide by 7. Um, you have the sine of x, etc. So the inverse function, written f inverse of x, basically this undoes what your function up here does to x. So for example, if f tells x to put on its shoes, the inverse function would tell uh, x to take them off. So it's just basically like the opposite. So this undoes what f did to x. And so let's go ahead and just do a couple simple examples. And we're going to do all of these in our head. And then we'll work up to some harder ones. So let's start with a really easy example, maybe the easiest one I can think of. f of x, and it's given by the formula x plus 2. So this is a function and what it does is it takes x which is a variable which could be any number and it adds 2 to that number. So the inverse function should undo that. So f inverse of x. So the opposite of adding 2 is to subtract 2. So the inverse function should take x and simply subtract 2. And that's it. That's the inverse function. It's that easy. Now, this is the easiest example, and it can get harder. So let's do some, some harder examples so you see how hard it can actually get. Let's just build up on this one. Let's say we have f of x equals 3x and then plus 7. So a little bit harder than the one we have up here, but not too much. So in this case, it can help to write something down so you have like a mental thought process uh, or you can do it all in your head. First, I'll do it in my head. I'll just explain it in words and write the answer down. And then I'll show you how you can go to the side and just make some like mental notes to help you. So here F takes X, multiplies it by three and adds seven. Again, it takes X, multiplies it by three and adds seven. So the inverse function has to undo that in reverse order. So I'll say it one more time. It takes x, multiplies it by 3, and adds 7. The opposite of adding 7 is to subtract 7. The opposite of multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3. So I said that pretty quickly, so maybe you didn't follow. So that's why it's sometimes it's good to write down your mental thought process. So here it takes x, and it multiplies it by 3. I'll just put mult 3, and then it adds seven. So to undo that, right, we want to work in reverse order. What's the opposite of adding seven? So that would be subtracting seven. And the opposite of multiplying by three would be to divide by three. And this this uh, is really cool. I remember when I first discovered this, um, I was teaching a class and I was writing my notes and I thought I should be able to do this in my head. <laughs> so I felt like a rock star. It's really not that complicated, but it, it's fun when you figure it out on your own. Let's do another one. How about f of x equals uh, the cube root of x. And let's maybe add one and then we'll divide by three. So now we're involving uh, cube root functions. So it's a little bit more complex, but it's still not not too bad. So same thing, except this time, instead of doing it all in my head, I'm going to write out the steps over here on the right so you see them. So this function here um, takes x, takes the cube root of x. So cube root, I'll just put cube root. Then it adds 1. And again, this is just to help your mental process. And then divide by 3. All right, that's the order that things are done in. Takes the cube root of x, adds one and then divides by three. Okay, so let's go ahead and undo that. Okay, let's undo that. These are really fun. So the inverse function undoes this in reverse order. So instead of dividing by three, um, we multiply by three. So it takes x and multiplies by three. 
And then instead of adding one, you have to uh, subtract one, so minus one. And then the opposite of taking the cube root would be to cube the entire thing, so cubes it. By the way, you can check all of your answers here, right, by simply taking the composition of these two functions. So um, it's not hard, and maybe we'll do it with the last example just to show you. All right, let's do one more. Let's just do, just so you get the idea, um, how about f of x? equals, and let's see, how about two times the cube root of x minus 11 plus four, all divided by uh, five, five. So I'm definitely gonna write some stuff down on the side here, just as, a, or maybe down here as a mental, mental note. So the first thing it does is it takes x and subtracts 11. So I'm just gonna put sub 11 then it takes the cube root, so I'll put cube root. Then it multiplies by two, so mult two. Then it adds four, so add four. Then it divides by five, divide by five. It's a really cool way to think about the function. It really forces you to think about what this function is doing to x, step by step, right, which is really kind of cool. So let's just double check this. The first thing it does is subtracts 11, takes the cube root, multiplies by two, you add four, then you divide by five. All right, this is awesome. Let's go ahead now and write down the inverse function. So this one will do everything in reverse order. So instead of dividing by five, we're going to multiply by five. So it'll be five uh, x, right, because five times x, and then, so that's done. And then instead of adding four, we're going to subtract four, so minus four, so check. Instead of multiplying by two, uh, we're going to divide by two. So check. Instead of doing the cube root, we're going to cube everything. Check. And instead of subtracting 11, uh, we're going to add 11. So check. And that's pretty wicked, so let's go ahead and check. So we know that a function and its inverse uh, undo each other, right? They undo each other. So that means that if we were to compute f of f inverse of x, just for example, f inverse does something to x, f undoes that, so we should get x. Likewise, if you go the other way, f inverse of f of x, f does something to x, f inverse un undoes that, so we get back x, right? A function and its inverse completely undo each other. You can think of it as canceling if you like, right? Look, I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna write the line. It's like, it's almost like they cancel, right? I mean, it's, it's pretty much what's happening. They are undoing each other, which is really cool. So let's just check one of these. Let's check uh, f of f inverse of x. Let's just check this one just to see if it works. You're technically supposed to check both, but I'm pretty sure this is right. So let's see, f of f inverse of x. And this is basically, this is basically telling us to take this whole thing, right, I'm gonna skip one step here just because it's pretty messy, and this goes here. Okay, maybe I'll write it. F of, <laughs> and then we have 5x minus four over two cubed plus 11. So this whole thing here, this entire thing here, I'm gonna put it in a underline it so you see it, is our x. This whole thing here that I'm circling is our piece here, which we're, which we're plugging in, but now it's our x. So I'm just gonna replace this x up here in this formula, right? This is the formula for f with what I have circled here. So this will be, it's gonna scroll down a little bit, hopefully you can still see. This will be two, and then it's the cube root of, and it's all of this stuff here, so it would be five x minus four over two cubed plus 11, minus 11, plus four, and then it's all divided by, it's all divided by five. So all of this down here is divided by five. A little sloppy there, but basically, it's gonna, this piece here is, is our x up here. So you have the minus 11, the plus four, and the five, the minus 11, the plus four, and the five, and this whole thing here, five x minus four over two cubed plus 11, that's your little x there. And so you see what happens here. I'll skip a couple steps here. These go away, we end up taking the cube root, 
So the three here goes away. Uh, the cube root gets rid of the three. So we get two, five X minus four over two plus four. And it's all over five. These go away. And so we end up with five uh, X minus four plus four over five. So we end up with five X over five which is just X, right? So it certainly checks. And I wasn't planning on checking in this video, so I rushed it a little bit there at the end. But that's how you could check. And you could check all of these like this. I just chose to check uh, the hardest one we did in this video. So the main idea you should take away from this video is that uh, functions and their inverses undo each other. And you learn them in classes like, um, for example, college algebra is a class oftentimes uh, in college, at least in the US, where, where they teach this. Um, but you, you use it in higher level math. There are really cool problems in mathematics where you have to find inverse functions. I remember doing problems with like countability and just all, all kinds of weird abstract algebra problems where you have to like construct these really cool inverse functions. It's always really fun when you can create one on your own. So they are important and they are cool. And it's really nice to be able to think about them like this. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.